How would you solve this problem? Given a grid in a data structure of your choice, each grid cell is either an open site or blocked. Your algorithm needs to return a boolean that states whether the top of the grid is connected to the bottom with open sites. Or in other words, whether it percolates. As you can see here, the top node clearly connects to the bottom. But here, it's blocked by a closed site. It's important to note that diagonals do not count in this scenario. You might consider writing a recursive function that checks all neighbors to see if they connect to the bottom. But what if I told you that this needed to happen in a matter of milliseconds, even with millions of cells in the grid? Welcome to a series where I break down some of the most impactful and revolutionary algorithms you can add to your skill set as a developer, or use to improve your problem solving and optimization skills. Today, we're going to cover the Union Find algorithm and implement it into a C program that highlights percolating grid cells and notifies the user when there is an open route from the top to the bottom. Unions have many use cases as well, including games development, networking, and database engineering. Before implementing it in C, let's first talk about how this algorithm works and how we are going to use it to solve this problem. While unions have many variants, today we're going to cover the implementation of two methods. The first is a connect method, where its purpose is to connect two nodes together. This can be chained to create a tree of connected nodes. The second method simply checks if two given nodes are connected to each other, even if indirectly. You can imagine how this can be used to solve our grid problem. We simply need to use these methods to connect open grid cells in our data structure, and check if one of the top cells is connected to one of the bottom cells, which if true, means the grid percolates. Let's now have a look at how we can implement a union in code, and how we can make this work for our grid. Later, I'll guide you through how we can make this algorithm really fast. The implementation of a union starts with an array, which keeps this as simple as possible. Each item in the array represents a node in the tree, and each item contains the ID for the root of that node. For example, 0's root is 5, and so its value in the array is also 5. Elements that don't have a root will be assigned to their own index. When connecting two nodes in our code, we simply need to assign all IDs with the same root as A to the root of B. For example, if we wish to connect 2 and 5, we simply need to assign all whose root is equal to 2 to 5. If we call connect on 2 and 4, the root of 2 is 5 and the root of 4 is 4. So we assign all elements equal to 5, the root of 2, to 4. I hope that's not got too confusing. It's also worth noting that the behavior of this function depends on the order of the function arguments. Checking if two elements are connected is really simple. The program simply checks if the root of A is equal to the root of B. There is a problem with this entire approach, however. If we look at the implementation of the connect function, you can see that it involves looping through every component in the tree. While this is much better than a recursive search, there are certain cases where this implementation is just not efficient enough, especially when there are millions of cells to deal with. While a grid example isn't a real use case, it is great practice to try and work around limitations such as this. Let's now consider an improved version of this, and then we can finally implement this into our grid in C. This is the implementation we are going to work with to solve the grid problem. Our new implementation still involves an array of nodes, but now, instead of each node's value being equal to its root, the value is now set to its parent instead. And just like before, if a node has no root, it is assigned to its own index. So now, connecting two elements is a little more complicated. Like before, we need to set the root of A to the root of B. Let's say we wish to connect 3 and 6. In this case, 3 is easy, as its root is just itself. To get the root of 6, we must first get index 6's value, which is 7. And now we check index 7's value, which is 2. And finally, we check 2's value, which is equal to itself. So now we know that the root of 3 is 3, and the root of 6 is 2. So we now simply set the value of 3 in the array to 2, which is the root of 6. In order to implement this in code, we must implement a getRoot function, which simply traverses up the tree until the value is equal to its index. 
Similar to before, to connect two items together, we simply use the get root function and assign the root of A to the root of B. To check if two items are connected, we use the get root function to check if the two item roots are equal. This is already a lot better than our previous implementation, as it does not involve looping through the entire grid. Later on, there are still some significant optimizations we can make to this implementation. Now it's finally time to implement this in our C application. This was my first time using SDL, so I took inspiration from some code on GitHub that creates a grid. With a bit of work, I now had a grid that you could poke holes into. I somehow wrote the least optimized code imaginable. For some reason, I assumed that you had to re-render the frames instead of just rendering them once to the screen. This was an easy fix, as I could just decrease the size of the poked boxes, so that they wouldn't overwrite the grid border. Now, usually a grid is represented in memory as a multi-dimensional array, but for our union to work, this needs to be stored inside a flat array. Inside this array, representing each grid cell, instead of single integer values, I created a struct for each cell containing the rectangle for STL to draw, the cell's parent node, and a boolean stating whether the cell is open or not. When each cell is clicked, the open variable needs to be set to true for that cell. Each open cell surrounding the clicked cell should also have the connection function called to it. This clicking feature led to some crazy math that I needed to do in order to get the index of the flat array in which the mouse was pointing at. Because I'm incapable of thinking like a normal person, it took a while to get this working correctly. Getting this working was the best feeling in the world, however to this day I still have no idea how this math works, even though I wrote it. Next, I implemented our improved implementation of a union to that flat array. But instead of assigning each array item's value, I just assigned the root property on the struct. I also made the necessary calls to the connect method. Now it was time to check if the grid actually percolates, each time a new hole is poked into the grid. The first option was to loop through each cell in the top row, and check if one of these cells are connected to a cell in the bottom row. But, as you can see in this code, this had a horrible time complexity. A much better option was to create two virtual nodes on the top and bottom of the grid, and check if they are both connected to each other with one single isConnected call. To implement this, I simply added two extra entries to the end of the union array, and assigned the roots of all top nodes to the top virtual node, and the roots of all bottom nodes to the bottom virtual node. Finally, I made the isConnected check, and... It works! It works! I'm so happy with that. I next added a feature where you could hold down the mouse and fix some bugs with the border calculations. After this, I created a random mode where the grid would randomly populate itself until it percolates. I also made the percolating cells blue to make it look nicer. Now it's time for some simple but very necessary optimizations. The first is to add weighting, because at the moment the child tree might be larger than the parent tree. Appending elements like this can cause a big performance problem as it can cause the tree to have a large height, which results in longer root retrieval times. A simple fix to this is to add a size property to the struct, and add to that size when a child is added. Inside the connect function, we then simply append the smallest node as the parent of the largest node. The next optimization is even simpler. We can use path compression when calling the get root function to assign the parent of each node directly to its grandparent. We do this with one simple line inside the while loop. This therefore halves the path length each time get root is called. And there we have it, an implementation of fast percolation inside our grid. I would like to give a huge thank you for 50,000 subscribers as this just would not be possible without you all. If you enjoyed this new style of video be sure to like and subscribe and let me know your own solutions or video suggestions below. Thanks for watching.